Live from the studio at the Northwest Florida School of Biblical Studies, this is Have a Bible Question, where you are part of the program. Now, let's go to the Bible for answers to your Bible questions. Hey, I got asked a question today. I thought that was very interesting. A uh, man wanted to know if I knew what language that Jesus spoke. Uh, he spoke, he didn't speak the King's English. Like, was it King James English? No, he didn't. He well, didn't use the King James Bible either. What about Paul? Paul didn't <laughs> speak or write King James English? No, no, not at all. I'm, I'm confused now. Uh, you know, we, we say that jokingly, but you know, a lot of people forget that, that, um, you know, it's not English language, but, uh, I would, um, answered him. I said, well, it would have been the Greek language. And he was like, Hey, you got that right. <laughs> I was like, I hope I did. I always hate it when they test the preacher, you know, type thing. We stop and think about it. That is kind of interesting, you know, to think that Jesus spoke Greek, you know, and that, that now he also spoke Aramaic, Aramaic as well. And, and Hebrew. He could speak Hebrew, uh, but you see that in Paul. You know, Paul did that. He would be speaking to uh, the jailer or the was it the guard there at Antonio Fortress. He was clearly speaking in Greek, and then he turned right around to the people and started speaking to them in Hebrew. And so clearly, you see multilingual people in the Bible. Right? You might have the answer to this. I don't know, um, but uh, I wonder sometimes how much of the Hebrew. Uh, I, I know they used it some, but we know of uh, Jesus quoting from the Septuagint, which was the Greek translation of the right. um, Old Testament Hebrew. Uh -huh. It, it kind of makes you wonder how much were they actually using the Hebrew language during their time. Uh, we know it being the language of the Hebrew of, of the Jewish people, but um, obviously they were using the Greek a lot. Using the Greek a lot, and I believe in the synagogues and in a lot of the Jewish uh, worship that they were doing, they were speaking Hebrew. Mm -hmm. And there, and then of course, Aramaic being mixed in there as well. You know, whenever you see that in, uh, on when Jesus is on the cross and he says, uh, Lama Sabachthani, mm -hmm. Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabachthani, and that's Aramaic, right? Mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. So I, I, that's one thing I love about the Bible. And that, that is one of the reasons, the main reasons why I often set, tell every single Christian, you should know some Greek. You should learn some Greek. You, now, you don't need to be proficient in it and, and be able to speak it because nobody knows how Koine Greek is actually spoken. But you should know some of the main words and some of the main ways it works and things like that. But then the question comes, you know, how do I how do I learn some of that? You know, there's some references. I always encourage people. Strong uh, concordance mm -hmm. is a good one to have. And you can get a uh, digital version online for free. That's right. Um, it, it's it, it's something, though, about picking up that big old book uh, and, and being able to look up words in it. Um, yeah. But if you have that, uh, a there's that it's numbered to Strong's can be useful uh -huh. as well as being able to um, be able to uh, a Vines Expository Dictionary. Yes, a that's lot. a great that's a great one. I love that. And so, you know, people say, oh, I'm not going to learn Greek. Well, you don't have to really learn Greek. No. You just know how to look these things up. I was able to show somebody a word earlier, uh, you know, and show them the compound, how it makes and how it was able to give a better definition. Uh, I was thinking about in First Timothy, I was recording a video for class. It was talking about uh, to put the brethren in remembrance. Mm -hmm. Well, put in remembrance is actually one word. Yes. <laughs> Rather than, and it looks like it would be separate words with brethren being in the middle of it, but it really by the idea of put in remembrance the brethren. But that word for put in remembrance, when you look it up, is actually put the legs under something. Wow. And so whenever it's talking about put in remembrance these things, these teachings, is is like, Put the legs under the brethren That's awesome. so that they can stand upon, have a foundation upon which to stand. And so it just brings that scripture to light in a better way. And that's the mm -hmm. beauty of the Greek. There's so many wonderful little, I call them nuggets like that. There's little nuggets of wisdom in there. Like uh, in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, whenever it says we need to be transformed. Oh, uh, yeah. That's Met the metamorphosis. word metamorpho. Okay. Where we get our word metamorphosis, which really gives you a, a deeper sense and idea of what it means to be transformed and your mind being transformed. And there it is on the screen and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So think about that. 
that metamorphosized, if you will, of your mind. That's a, just one of those little nuggets that, that you can learn from the Greek. Yeah, exactly. You know, the, the in-depthness to Bible study, um, you know, just a lot of times, you know, do we want just a surface understanding of something exactly. or do we want to know more about it? It's kind of like a car. Honestly, if I can stick the key in the ignition and turn it and it crank up and drive, I'm happy. Uh, but you know, there's people that say, no, I want to know what's engine in it, what kind of oils in that engine, you know, and, and all the details of it. Guyton, the Bible is the most important book in all the world. Why wouldn't you want to know more about that? Exactly. 